Hey, this is Joe Gilder from HomestudioCorner.com, and this is the first of many videos that I'm going to bring to you on PreSonus' Studio One software. So the, these first couple of videos I'm going to, are going to be more overviews of the three basic sections to Studio One, and then, of course, we're going to dive in deep into each of them, and I'm going to show you how I use each of them in my studio. I do lots of different things out of my studio music, but also things like podcasts and videos. So there's a lot of different things that I'm going to be able to show you, and I'm very excited to show these to you. So we're going to start off with the start page. That's what you see here. When you first open Studio One for the first time, you're going to see this start page. Now, if you have been using Studio One for a while, you probably know the three basic pages. But if you haven't, or if you're new to it, this is them right here. Start, Song, and Project. Start page is what we're looking at now. We'll cover Song and Project in the next two videos. So the start page. When I first used Studio One for the first time, I thought, okay, it's a start page, big deal. Let me get in there and make, make some music. But the more I looked at it and the more I kind of explored it a little bit, I realized this is actually a pretty cool and useful feature, and it's a page that I actually use quite a bit. So what is the start page? Well, for f the probably the thing I use the most with a start page is right over here, the recent files list. It gives me the list of probably 10 to 15 files that I've used most recently, and it has them in reverse chronological order, and it tells me when I last updated them, which is pretty cool. Also, if there are uh, songs in here and sessions that I don't need to keep track of, I can actually remove them from this list. For example, this uh, VIP panel gobo video. This is the audio for a video that I shot. I don't need to get back to that anytime soon. So I can remove that from the recent files list. Pretty cool. Other cool thing about the recent files list is if you're not sure where a file is located, just hover over it and it'll tell you. This is one of my podcasts. It's on the system drive. This is a songwriting session and it's located on my 500 gigabyte Firewire drive. Okay. Pretty cool stuff. You can also get to, if you work on a lot of songs and projects, songs are, in, are what it sounds like, individual songs, and then projects are mastering sessions. You can get to those separately here, or you can just look at your most recent files here. Pretty cool stuff. The other section over here, the artist profile. I don't use this a whole lot, but if you are like me and you record yourself and your own music a lot, then it makes sense to go ahead and pre-populate some of that information. So, when you're working on a song in Studio One and you go to bounce out an MP3 to share with your fans or to drop into iTunes, in other DAWs, you have to kind of fill in that metadata yourself as you export it. So fill in the artist name, the genre, website, stuff like that. Well, with Studio One, you can pre-populate that here. So if the majority of the music I work on is my own, I can go ahead and fill this out, even put a picture of myself, which I haven't. I look a little different than this. Uh, here so that that'll be in those songs. You can always change that if you're working on someone else's music, but it's kind of a nice feature to have. And then here's your setup section. Uh, it's where you have what fire, uh, what interface you're using. I'm actually using a PreSonus Studio Live console right now, and it just shows up in Studio One as a Fire Studio with a bunch of inputs and outputs. But this is a quick glance to show me what my uh, latency is right now, what sample rate I'm at, and then a couple of quick links to get to some of the uh, settings that you'd want to get to fairly regularly. Now over here, this is actually pretty cool. This is a news feed, which is super helpful. For example, uh, back in May when a new version of Studio One came out, this had a little pop-up that let me know. So when I fired up Studio One, I saw, oh, hey, there's a new version. Great, let me come down here, click check for update, and it said, hey, there's a new version that you need to download and update. Boom. Super simple. I don't have to go check out the PreSonus website every once in a while to see if there's an update. It's right there letting me know. Also, lots of cool discounts and other fun stuff. You can see Rick Nockvie's beautiful face right there. It's just a wonderful thing. Uh, and then there's also a page for demos and tutorials, which is not updated very regularly, but hopefully that's going to change uh, with these videos I'm putting out. So, boom. Final thing that you can get to, final place you want to look at is just right up here. You can create a new song right here, create a new project, and open an existing document. So, if what you want isn't right here, you can click this and just open an existing file and go find it wherever it is on your hard drive. And then here's where you can create a new song and a new project. New songs are super cool. You can just create a new empty one, use some of the pre-filled out session templates that they have, or create your own. And I'll be talking about session templates in a future video. Don't worry your little head about that right now. So this is the overview of the start page. From here, you can do anything, and it's a very helpful and useful page. So if you didn't know 
that it was there and you've kind of skipped past it, now you know it's actually a pretty useful page. Okay, in the next video, we're going to talk about the song page and then we'll move on to the project page and then we'll move on to other awesome stuff. Thanks for watching this video. Again, I'm Joe from homestudiocorner.com. See you in the next video. Thank you.